So today I'm going to show you how to dig uh, an area level um, without a laser uh, with the iDig system. Um, it's really straightforward uh, and especially on a small area like I have here, um, it's dead easy to, uh, to do. So I've got to basically dig this area for a container, which are these four pins you see here. This is, this is the low point, I know that's my lowest pin. Um, I got this pin here, and then I got two more that are around in this direction. These two are higher, um, and I actually think that one there is the highest corner. That container over there in the distance is what's coming over here. Um, and then I've got the same to do for a toilet block that's going to sit here, another kind of port cabin toilet block, um, which is what I've been digging my foul drain for. Anyway, what I can do is, making sure that I've got the correct bucket set up, because obviously that's the key with all of this, it doesn't know what it's doing unless it's got the right bucket, so I've got my metre bucket, so I can validate that, so that's all good, um, that's probably the most common mistake that people make really with this system. Um, I can set myself up, especially in a small area like this, you know, and literally um, tell it, or it'll tell me what the level difference is. I obviously did this yesterday with the laser, because I was setting out with the um, the client that I'm working for here, so we kind of worked out where it would go and what he wanted to do. Um, so at the moment, obviously, it's asking me question marks, I haven't referenced anything. So um, all I do is tell it with the pencil that that is my zero, and then I can go around to the next pin and tell it, it'll tell me I'm 40 mil higher there on that pin or at least across the bucket anyway. It takes the measurement from the sort of middle or you know any edge of the bucket. With the tilt rotator you have to be careful not to tilt it um, because obviously that'll give it a false reading because it doesn't know because I haven't got my tilt sensors on at the moment um, what the edge of the bucket is. When I've got my tilt sensors on you can literally hold the edge of a bucket on a point and it'll tell you exactly what that is. Um, so, so that's 20 mil higher Sorry, 200 mil higher. And it's saying 280 there. So you can see how um, I've got quite a, a, a lot of sort of falls over the area. The idea is they want to dig it down um, 200 mil um, so that that sticks out the ground a little bit that end, um, but not a huge amount. So. Um, because obviously the container itself has got a lip on it anyway before you get in the doors. This whole area that we've got over here is all going to be uh, made hard standing, like when the skip is, and down to the, um, down to the doors of this shed. Uh, that's all got to be hard standing, but um, we thought we'd get the containers in and sat on their, what, their pads, which is also a job for me to do today. Um, and then we'll work out the levels really from, from that. It's going to have to be a bit freestyle. But yeah, so anyway, I now know what my um, what my points are, so I can actually start digging um, from this, knowing that I'm you know 200 mil higher, uh, and it'll um, it'll work it all out. So I can basically turn back round here to my high point because I know that's where I want to go down from. I set myself up a bit better for digging. actually going to remove the pin I'm just because I've got to put pads where them pins are anyway so I'll leave the pins in for now because I know they're set out accurately um, so I can go right I zero it point two is what I'm going down because it, it works sort of like that in that, that sort of decimal and it'll tell me I need to dig down 200 mil or 20 centimeters as it calls it point two of a meter um, this system here, I mean, in a bigger machine, obviously this screen would be further away from you and maybe a bit harder to see, um, and you'd use the traffic lights a bit more. I don't find them that useful, mainly because the the, the, the most they can be sensitive, the sort of sensitivity settings, I think is 60 mil, I think is the lowest you can go. Now, I'd rather have them, like each, each light that is, at 10 mil, so that, that that in theory will be reading me 40 mil, because that's sort of the accuracy I want to go to moment you know it's sort of you know it's, it's not really any good you can change all that settings and you can get bigger um, desk you know sort of 
readings on these lights, so every light could be 200 mil to you, but it won't go lower than 60 mil, which I think is a bit of a shame, but there's talk of them updating that. And it's so easy to update this, you can plug a, a USB stick, they send, um, you know, your dealer can send you a, a file, uh, and through email, stick that on a USB stick, plug it in, and you can update your ID. So, you know, it's, it's really, really simple to do all of that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, as far as digging goes, um, it's now telling me I've got to dig down 200 mil, uh, which obviously is dead easy. And I can then follow that all the way back. And all I've got to do every time I dig an area, I, and I track back, obviously the elevation of my digger will change because I'm technically heading downhill if I go backwards. Um, I've just got to know that I've got a good area there, you know, in one place. And then when I move, hold my bucket on that spot that I knew was the right level reference it zero again and then off I go and it'll and it, you can in theory dig like that for hundreds of meters now you probably would end up with a, you know a, a tolerance of maybe 10 mil or something like that it depends how good a driver you are really I'm not amazing but um, you you could potentially accumulate a problem because obviously if you if that spot that you hold your bucket on is maybe 10 mil out you move you reference it again you, you're saying it's zero but it's not it's 10 mil high let's say and you could do that five or six times or whatever over an area um, and gain a, a height difference if you were doing a large area that is um, but you can obviously use the laser which I'll do in another video and that way you can keep it accurate every time you move you rescan the laser and bang you know you're at the right level um, but for small areas like this in particular the ability to level without getting the laser out the truck none of that trouble is is really handy um, and it's just a nice quick easy easy kind of grade tool I mean this container is going to sit on four pads so really all I'm doing here is reducing the ground to allow it to sit down at that level so it doesn't have to be that accurate and it's perfect for that dead quick dead easy again no man on the staff outside and it's um, super simple you could also use in theory the tape measure function which when you touch the screen you get all these extra um, icons come up there's a tape measure up here which you can hold and that will tell you where you are now, it obviously zeroes it where I am, and if I turn round and hold the bucket down here, at that pin, it will tell me what my vertical is, different to that, it'll tell me what my horizontal is, perhaps that's how far away it is, 6.4 metres, um, so it will actually measure from your slew point, it's 2D, you know, it, it knows which way you're facing, and what you're doing um, so actually we can try that because we know a container is six meters long right so in theory this might not work sort of a bit right so I'll zero the tape measure zero everything's at zero if I then hold it on this pin over here just behind it so the other one 5.96 so it's not like millimeter tape measure accurate but it's pretty much telling me and it might be because I'm on a bit of a hill or or I'm not you know I'm not set up level obviously I'm on the slope at the moment but it's pretty much telling me that um, you know it's 50 mil off six meters away so that's not bad um, you know I wouldn't use it as an accurate setting out tool like that but it, you can get a quick idea of like where you are or um, you know that kind of thing. It's it's more handy actually for its slope, so it'll tell you what um, what slope you're at uh, or what what the full gradient is, and that is very useful, um, especially you know an area like I've got here. You know, I'll be able to work out what my what my fall is. I've set up a string line before, used my slope tape measure tool to work out you know what's what's the slope at that point and what's the slope at this point with a dipper, and it'll tell you what that fall is, and then you can continue that like you'd have a string line, it's just a bastard fall you've made um, between two points, it, you know, it'll work it out. Um, which for those of us who don't have all this stuff written down on plans about where things are meant to be and all that is um, it's really useful. So it's um, it's a handy little tool, um, but again, you have to kind of, you know, use it within sort of parameters. Uh, so I'm gonna get digging here, because uh, I've got a job to do.